Okay, so hi everyone. Thank you for joining in and thank you Lynn for this wonderful opportunity. I always say this and I don't think this is enough. Uh, every time I say it, I want to do one more session with Orangeburg Library and Lynn. And I won't take much of your time about my introduction. Just want to say I'm a self-taught artist. I love to draw, I love to paint, I love to use different mediums like acrylics, watercolors, markers, colored pencils, clay, and so on. I have a huge list. So all I want to do is share my art with everyone, with all the creative participants like you. So without any further ado, I'll just start the session. So this is a very simple fall art painting that I have created for the beginners as well as for intermediates or those who are really advanced in acrylic painting. I would love to create with you all, but at the same time, please enjoy. Though it's not a paint and sip, but definitely you can get something to sip. I have my water with me and you all can get whatever you want to sip and enjoy the session along with learning what I'm doing. And if you have any questions, you can ask me anytime, unmute yourself, or if the screen is not clear, you can put it in the chat. I'll try to check uh, and answer your queries. So let's begin and learn and enjoy. So I just changed the placement of my camera a little. And I hope you all are able to see this sheet of paper that I have stuck on the base or the table. I have used a masking tape. Thank you, Lynn, for the thumbs up. And now, uh, if you have a masking tape, that's the best option. If you don't, you can just put it on the table and you can just start coloring from the edge itself rather than from where we have stuck the tape. So if you want to stick the tape, you can do that right now. And I'll just repeat the supplies till the time if you are putting the tape on it. So we'll need some acrylics, some acrylic paints, uh, the paint brushes that you must be having, a flat brush and a round brush. Then some paper towel, a cup of water, and a plate or a painting palette that you have uh, just to mix colors. I think that's these are the things that we would need. So I'll just start the session. But before that, if you have any questions, you want me to wait for a second, you can let me know or a thumbs up would do. Now take your, I hope you've, you're have you all uh, good with your paper, whether you've stuck it or whether you've put it on the base. And I am going to take a paper plate or a plastic plate. You can have your color palette. Then you must be having a flat brush and a thin brush. Now each brush will differ. I, I'm sure mine will be different from yours, but it, I think it will serve the purpose on this small paper. So now just, Take your flat brush and I'm just putting the plate here so you're able to see it nicely and take your dark green color. I know the shade might differ for, for me and you, but again, it will solve, solve the purpose. So I'll just take a blob or two of green color on one section. Then take some yellow color and put it on another section. Then, so it's like a gradient look that we'll be creating for the background as if the light is coming through, like dark green on the left and the right, then a little lighter, then more lighter in the center. So it will be green first, then yellow and green. So put yellow and green together again. So green is separate, then take yellow and again a little green near the yellow. Not mixing yet. And now another section wherein we'll take three colors. That is dark green, yellow and white. So it's a little bit of preparation, but it'll be fun when we paint. Now another section in which we'll take green, same green color. some yellow. It might be a little confu confusing initially, but when we'll start painting, it will actually be easy to understand. Now I'm taking some white. 
I hope it comes out. Yeah. So you can see one green section, one yellow and green section, and one green, yellow, and white section. I hope it is good. If you want me to wait or if you're good, you can just give me a thumbs up. Okay, I think everyone is good with it. I would love to converse along, talk along, as it will be really good for all of us and we'll enjoy it much more. Okay, now I'll just change my position a little so that everybody will be able to see what I'm doing. I'm taking some green color now on my flat brush. So take good enough green color on your flat brush. And we are making the painting in a portrait way, right? Not in a landscape. So it is like more lengthwise than widthwise. So we'll be going from bottom to top, top to bottom to create the first stroke with the green color. So I know, uh, you know, I have a masking tape. So some color might go on top of it. So I'll be just using the width of the brush to color the first section going kind of straight, but since it is freehand art, it can go a little wiggly, it's okay. So aim is to color the left edge of the paper or the canvas fully, the left edge. So the width might differ for each of us. Mine will be a little bigger, yours will be smaller, or it may be vice versa. Now I'm going to take some more green color and put it on the right edge of my paper. So first green on the left and the same green on the right. Kind of covering the same amount of portion on the right itself. I'll put a little bit more green color and I'll be moving my camera a little for you in case there is something that is missing or you're not able to see. So kind of straight green strokes on the left as well as on the right. Try to cover it, but you can definitely give finishing touches later. Now, without any delay, let's come to the next part because I don't want this green color to dry up fully. Now you can take the same brush, you don't need to wash it. And with this, I'll introduce with the first technique. This is called the dry brush technique. You are not using any water. You're just using paint and brush and your canvas to color it. So no water means the dry brush technique. It's completely related to what we are doing. So this was an easy part. Now next part is let's take the next section that's yellow and green. And you can mix them together. Now it depends on your judgment, how much light you want to make. It needs to be light green. That is a little lighter, lighter shade than the dark green color that you have made. So you can mix a little bit of both and make a light green color and keep on mixing more if you want more of it. So you can just see that I'm going to put the next section, the light green color next to the left edge where I've put dark green color. So I'll just overlap a little bit on top and then cover a little bit more of the section with light green color. Now I think you must be understanding why I am, I have mixed, I have taken three sections for the same kind of colors, each time increasing the number of colors. Like first it was green, then yellow and green, then yellow, green and white. So now I've covered the left side or with almost the same amount of width as the dark green color. Then I'm going to color the same light green color on the right hand side, the same way as I did for the left hand side. Initially it might seem a little untidy, but we'll be giving fin finishing touches. That's what happens with acrylics. That even if we make a mistake, we are able to cover up with more layers on top. So I'm almost covering any white spots on the paper by just overlapping the color on top.
I hope it's going good with everyone. Just a thumbs up would do. I know I'm not able to see your art. Thank you so much, Mary. Okay, now I've covered the light green color part and the dark green color part. Now, you must be seeing that these two joints where dark green and light green are meeting, we need to make a soft edge in between them rather than a hard edge. That is, you can see the two colors separately. We need to make a soft edge. That means we need to make a gradient look so that the color progresses from the darker color to the lighter color. For that, what we can do is take some dark green color again. Not too much, just enough. And where these two colors, the dark and light are meeting on the left side, I'm going to overlap a little bit on top of the joint and the dark green color. You can see here, I'm putting just the dark green color just to kind of blend in both the colors nicely. And this way it will give a kind of a gradient look. Again, if the color is wet, you don't need to overlap it again and again. We can give finishing touches and moreover, there will be trees on the top and any kind of hard edges will be covered with the trees. Now, again, if there is still a little bit of hard edge in between the joint, you can take the light green color that you created and now overlap it, overlap it on top of the joint again, covering more of the light green color and the joint where both the green and the light green are meeting. I hope this part is clear. So the main aim is to blend in both the colors nicely, but at the same time, they show up a little bit, peep out a little bit, bit behind each other. A little bit of dark green, a little bit of light green together, creating a gradient look. And this technique introduces us, like it's called the soft edge technique. So it's the second technique. The first was a dry brush. The second is a soft edge. And you don't need to note it anywhere. I'll be sending a nice uh, follow-up email of the session so that you'll be, and, and moreover, we are being recorded. So it would be the best place to see if anything you forget. So I have covered the left and I have covered it nicely. I am thinking of covering a little bit on the left because I felt a little bit of white part there. Now on the right, I'm going to follow the same technique taking a little bit of dark green and overlapping it a little bit on top of the joint where both light and dark are meeting. And if you see any white spots, you can cover it with more layers. Now I'm taking the light green again. I think this is not enough, so I'll just mix in both more. And then I will put it on top of the light green part again. And this way, both the colors, they are blended, but at the same time, they are showing up separately, creating a gradient effect. I hope this part is clear. A thumbs up would do. And I hope you all are enjoying. Now, now is the third section. Third is green, yellow, and white. Let's mix them together. You can mix a little bit of each or you can mix them all together. So I'm just bringing them a little forward and taking some white, yellow, and green in almost equal proportion. But yes, there is no way to measure it if it's equal or not. So just use your judgment. So it's kind of a pastel green that is created. If you want to create a little bit more lighter, you can add a little bit of white and yellow more than the green. So this way, this will be the lightest of all the colors that we have put on our paint. I think this is good, but in case any, I feel that this shade is not that good, I can add some lighter color to it. So I'm just adding it in the center. So this entire center part will be covered with this three shades together. I'm adding a little yellow more because I want more of brightness in it and a little bit of white.
So here you can take lesser green and more of white and yellow. So let's see how it comes out. Just going to and fro, top to bottom, and covering in the white spot in between. That's the biggest part. And just go to and fro. I know my edges are so untidy, but that will that's the use of a masking tape. When you'll take it off, it will be so satisfying and so neat and clean. So I'm just filling in the inner part. I hope you are having a nice uh, effect here. Each of ours will be a different in shade. And you can even try this on canvas. You must have seen the reference as Karen was saying. Uh, if you get a hold of it on paper, you'll definitely be able to create a nice painting on a bigger canvas and which will have a much brighter effect than paper. To learn, we can use any medium as canvas. So I'm just filling in the white parts. In case I see any white spots, just go in the same direction. And this technique of going in the same direction, we all know is like directional or forward and backward shading, wherein we are going forward, we are going backward. And this technique is used in almost all the mediums of art, whether it is colored pencils or acrylics or watercolors. So I try to apply different techniques in different mediums. And I hope it will help you in your future projects too. Now, again, if you have any hard edges in between the light green color and the pastel green that you've created, you can add, little bit on the joints and you'll be able to create a nice gradient texture. So again, use light over green, oh sorry, light over dark or dark over light, the way you want. The aim is that they blend in nicely. And this technique of blending them nicely is actually called blending. So it's actually the same technique, what we are doing and naming it that way. So you can see initially it is dark and inside it is getting brighter. Again, I'm just giving a little bit of finishing touch on the top and then let it dry a little, a little like in about a few seconds. You don't need to dry it completely. And then we'll take some brown color for the tree trunks. Till here, if anything, you need to ask or if you want to say anything you want me to help you in anything you can let me know i'm just adding a little effect on the right so quiet everybody is busy Okay, so I have almost covered my base. So this was kind of base shading. And yes, if we find anything that is like not that good at the end, we can add some finishing touches. I'm adding a little bit of dark. So it's like light, dark, light, dark, using them alternatively and just getting the right effect that you want. So I'm done with the inner part. Now, if you have any questions, you can ask or we can just jump up to the next part of creating the tree trunks, that simple lines. Or a thumbs up would do from everyone, please. Thank you. Thank you so much, Beth. Now, you know, I had asked you to keep a cup of water. You can just dip in this uh, flat brush inside it so that it gets cleaned a little bit. Let it be inside for a little while. And if you want to clean it right away, just dip it. Keep on dipping. Let the color go away. I know that's a very easy step, but still, I don't know. I have a habit of telling each step. And I'll just clean it with my paper towel. You can even keep it for like 
a little while in the water but i'm thinking let me clean it a little bit and put it put it aside so that i can come up with the next color and you can do the same i think it is good enough now i'll just keep it away and now you can take your rounded brush and take your brown color take your plate or the color palette i'm not keeping the plate down because i have my painting underneath i don't want to spoil it so i'll just take it place it in the air only with my hands and i'll just put some brown color on the on one of the sections now i have a habit of drawing lines sideways rather than up and down so i'll just change my position you can do it your way but we are making trees some vertical trees going from bottom to top so using the tip of your brush just take some brown color on the tip take out any extra and you know that the base has not dried up yet but i think the acrylics they are able to cover up so it should not mix up with the dark green color now you must be seeing different sections inside so i think four trees are good enough for my size of painting but if you want to make five you can make five too but don't make them too much crowded because we want this green tinge in the or kind of green pigment as if coming out of the trees like a forest look with some fall effect so a little bit from the left i'm going to create a line and i'm not dragging my brush from bottom to top top i am just overlapping the strokes and trying to make a kind of a imperfect perfect straight line so it's no use of tool just your hands to make a free tree trunk it need not be that perfect line as you know the tree trunks are not that straight so a little bit to the top i'll just leave a little bit of a gap from the top and create a straight line from the bottom and then you know that your green has not dried up yet and we need to finish the painting in this hour so i am just asking you to add more layers of brown on top so that it covers that green part so i think this much of big of a tree is good enough for my painting so just use your judgment and your proportion how much big you want to make i'm thinking of making a bigger on size that is the left and the right and then progressing with a little bit of shorter length of trees in the middle but you can do your own way you are learning the techniques and you can add your creativity so this was the first tree trunk that i created on the left at a little distance from the left edge then i'm going to create the same kind of and same length of the trunk on the right almost at the same distance from the right edge as it was from the left edge so just overlapping the strokes putting one over the other and almost the same length as left tree now how thick you want to make them it's your choice i think this much thick is good for me but each tree is different so you can make it your way i think i'll add a little bit of length to it now i what i said i usually apply other medium techniques to the acrylics as well so kind of making lines parallel to each other in colored pencil art is called hatching wherein you create 
parallel lines to create a nice pattern. Here we are creating them to create trees. So this technique just wanted to uh, let you know, just wanted to share my knowledge that it is called hatching. And I'll definitely send the kind of a follow-up email where, where and I will be telling you all these techniques if you want to use them later. Now there are two trees, sorry, not the trees, but the trunks on the left as well as on the right. Now in the center, just use your judgment, almost like dividing it into four sections. I'm going to create two more trees in the center and the in-between part, I'll keep it empty so that some light comes out as if some light is coming out. Once the painting is complete, you'll be able to see that. Now, again, a little bit at a distance from the left trunk, I'm going to create a kind of a straight line, kind of an imperfect straight line going up. Again, your paper might have fluffed up a little like mine has, but it will go back to its shape once the color has dried. Those who already know acrylics, they might be knowing about it, but those who don't, I just want to be sure that they are not scared what's happening to the paper. So now we are going to create another tree on the right, in the middle itself, and just drag it. Keep on dragging. Overlapping and dragging coming to the same size as the trunk as you made on the left hand side center part. I hope this is clear. Now, what we can do is we can create a few branches on all the trees. So very easy branches from the left hand side that is the extreme left trunk that we have created we can add a few branches you can see how i'm creating so at a little bit of distance from the bottom i just created a stroke on the left as a tree branch going to the left then a tree branch going to the right so that's the simplest way of creating these trees and making them brighter with a few yellow and orange leaves that we'll be create creating next then create another so it's like just giving a little pressure initially and then leaving at the end so you can have a nice tip at the end for the branches keep on adding a few as much as you want and that look good and proportionate to your work. So I've created the left hand side branches. Now I'm creating the extreme right hand side branches of the tree or the trunk. So keep on adding, keep on progressing going from bottom to top or you want to go from top to bottom it's your choice so this way you have created the branches for the left and the right hand side trunk now you can create the ones for the center it's very simple and again this technique of creating kind of strokes in the same direction is called directional lines. That's also a technique in colored pencil art, which I also apply in acrylics or in watercolor art. So just keep on adding. You want to add some wider branches, you can add wider. You want to add some thinner branches, you can do your way. So it's kind of a very simple freehand art, but at the same time, you are learning a few techniques that you can apply later in acrylic art. Now we are done with the tree and the branches. We can wait for like a second or two, and then we can come up to the 
the leaves, the yellow and the orange leaves, because I don't want the brown color to come on top of your leaves. So just like a second or two, we can wait, we can, uh, or what we can do is, we can add some yellow and orange color on the plate. So now my plate has almost filled up. So I'll just add a little bit of yellow, not too much. I hope everybody is able to see it. And take some orange. So yellow and orange, I think this should be good. Until that time, we can just wash the brush. So just dip it in water and then you can clean it with a paper towel so that the brown color goes away. Okay. I think it has cleaned up a bit and just wipe it off with the paper towel. And now we can move to our yellow and orange leaves. That's the best part that adds glow to your work and it's not at all tough. So take your thin brush and take some yellow color. Just yellow color on the tip. If you think that's too much extra on, on it, just put it on the plate and see if it is not too much on the brush. It's not overloaded. Now, around these branches, we can add a few dots. And if you want to add a bigger impression of this brush, you can press your brush a little bit, the tip of the brush. So what you can do is add a tip and then press it a little. So you'll see, I can zoom it up. I'll just switch off the video and switch it on. That helps me to zoom in. So like a few dots, if you want smaller dots, you can use the tip. If you want bigger dots, you can use the impression of the brush, like pressing it a little. And initially the yellow color will be darker and as the color gets on the canvas, it becomes lighter a little. So just keep on adding a few dots. So that's the easiest way to create the leaves. So I hope this part is clear and you must be enjoying. I feel it's very satisfying creating the leaves and the easiest part of all. I hope it is good and you all are enjoying. So this was a left tree, the extreme left tree. Then we can move up to the left inside middle one next to it. And add a few dots. So you can overlap the dots. You can make them small. You can make them big. It's your choice how you want to shape them. Bigger dots or smaller. Now I am on the third tree. I hope you are finding it easy. And it's coming out the same way as mine. Or maybe a little different but unique in your own way. So this was the, I'll just unzoom it. Now I think everybody is clear what I wanted to tell and teach. I'm on the extreme right tree. And I'm done. Now if you want to increase the size of the left and the right hand side tree, you can add a few more dots or leaves on the extreme right one and the extreme left one than the middle two ones. I think your 
painting is starting glowing up a little, a thumbs up would do. Thank you, Beth. Now I'll just move to some orange color. Some of you must have even jumped up to the orange color. But if not, just take some orange on top of your yellow color, which is on the brush. And you can add or overlap the orange on top of the yellow. And where you feel there is a little space you want to fill in, you can add some orange dots. Again, they can be big, they can be small. And it depends upon how you put your brush on the paper, whether it's the tip or flattening a brush a little bit on top to give a nice impression for the leaves. I feel the smaller the dots, not that small, like a mixture of both alternatively, like somewhere bigger, somewhere smaller. It creates variety and I think it is, it gives a more natural look to your work, especially if you're creating something related to nature. Because even if everything is not that perfect in nature, but it looks perfect. So this, this way we are doing it for our painting too. So we are just overlapping some orange on the yellow and somewhere where there is just green just adding some orange and it need not be bright throughout you can give a little bit of lighter yellow and that happens when the color or the it, it starts reducing from the brush in that way it goes from the darker color or darker shade to the lighter and it gives a good effect and then again you can add some more color to the brush now i think i have covered a lot and now I can even overlap a little bit of yellow to give a more brighter look on the top. So again it's like light and dark colors alternatively using them one over the other just the way we did our base shading. And uh, again I would like to add the technique that is the colored pencil technique again. Um, it's called stippling that is adding dots on a particular painting or whatever you are creating to create a nice texture and it is called just stippling so it's just adding some dots to create a nice texture or pattern here we are creating the leaves through these dots now if you are done with it or if you want me to wait both ways you can tell me you can give a good thumbs up so that we can continue to the bottom part where we can add a grassy patch at the bottom, a dark green colored patch at the bottom, and then add a few leaves or, if, or consider like you can add a few flowers of yellow and orange color. You can take it anyway, leaves or flowers, but yellow and orange color on that grass that we'll create. So a thumbs up would do so that we can continue or else you'll let, you can let me know and we can wait. Thank you, Beth. Okay, so now we are jumping to, I think, the bottom part and it will be kind of a second last part of our entire painting. Again, if you want to give finishing touches at the end, you can do that. So if you have your dark green color on your plate or your color palette, you can use that. Or you can add a little bit of more green, dark green color on the palette. I have enough, I think, on my palette. So I'll... Just use the same brush. I don't think I need to wash it. But if you want to wash it, you can because green is a dark color and it will overlap on yellow and orange and it won't make much of a difference. So I'm just using the same round brush and adding enough green on top. Not too much too. And adding a little grassy patch. So what I'm going to do is add a few lines like on the side kind of a straight line going. You can make it a little wavy now or you can make it wavy later on. So it's kind of a grassy patch at the bottom of the trees. So on this, from the sides or in between the tree trunks, you can create this wavy line or a straight line, it's your choice. I'm creating kind of a wavy line. And now we are going to color this section with dark green 
just the bottom section with dark green. You want to cover a little bit of the trees, you can cover that too. So just the tree trunk a little bit to just give a natural look to your work. And, but please let the other part of the trunk show up so that it gives a look as if the tree is coming out of the grassy patch or some of it is behind the grassy patch. So it's just your imagination how you want to make it look like. Here I'm just covering the left hand side, not the tree trunk. And just adding some green. I know it's a very easy part. Now I'm hiding a little bit of the tree trunk down. I hope the screen is clear to everyone, even till the bottom part, Lynn, is it clear or I need to focus it more? No, it's very clear. Right. Okay. So I hope everybody else is seeing the same thing. Okay, thank you. I think I have covered the lower part. And what we can do next is, I think, wait for a second and then you can use the same orange and yellow color for creating a few dots at the bottom to show as if there are some leaves lying down or there are some flowers at the bottom. So you, it's just your imagination. I'm thinking of as if some leaves are lying down on the grass. So again, you can wash your brush. Just put it in the water. Let the color go away. And then just wipe it off with the paper towel. I think the green has gone for me. I hope it has gone for you too. Now you can take either yellow color first or orange color. I'm thinking of taking some orange on the tip of my brush and add a few small dots. Starting with small, I'll just bring it a little bit down, put it somewhere here, or I think here, and add a few dots, a little bit smaller, then adding a little bigger. And you can see the color has faded a little bit, so I added some more orange to the brush and add it randomly, small and big, at the bottom. And you can even add a few orange dots a little bit on the top outline, the wavy outline that you created for the grass patch. As if the flowers are kind of peeping out or showing up on top of the grass. So I'll just zoom it up a little in case it's not clear. So it's just random dots here and there. So I try to make it as easy as possible and your painting comes out good as well. Now I'm going to add some yellow on the tip and then keep on adding somewhere overlapping on the orange, somewhere adding it on the green patch, just the yellow color. Now you can even do something more advanced. You can mix in both. I'll just show you mix in a little bit of orange, then yellow on the brush itself. And this technique is called layering, wherein you are taking two layers of colors, one orange and yellow, on the brush itself and putting an impression or kind of a design or pattern on your painting, giving a gradient look in the same dot, yellow and orange. Again, I'll be sending you an email for it so you don't need to remember it right away. I think this much is enough and a little bit more. And our Painting is complete. Now you can see if you want to give any finishing touches to your work. Or if it is complete, you can take off this masking tape or art tape if you have put on top of it. And yes, the brush, let me clean it and put it in the cup right now. And I am now going to do a tough part where I'll be taking off the tape and I'm scared that my paper doesn't get stuck to it too much. I'll just unzoom it. Again, if you have any questions, you can let me know and I would love to know how you like the session. So now I'm just taking it off, fingers crossed. 
think this one should be taken off first. So see the way it gives a very fine finishing touch on the side. I love that part. Even though it was so messy, it looked so messy on the tape. Now I think this one and just see yeah, I'm so scared taking it off. And this is the finished painting. And once it dries up, it will give a nice glowy touch to your work since these acrylics are quite glowing and shiny. These are not glazed. These are more of shiny or illuminated look. I hope you all also have completed it. But if you have not, we can wait a little bit and then we can take a nice picture. Right, Lynn? Yes. Okay. And then, yes, definitely, once it dries, please put your sign. Please put your name on top. Because I love when I write my name on it as if this, I own this painting, I made it. So that is a sense of achievement I get every time. And again, if you all just let me know how you like the session. I loved and, and I enjoyed creating it with you all. I hope you also enjoyed the same way as I did. 